That's another reason. Remember, this is as much about redefining the unconscious mind as it is anything else. The unconscious mind is the back door that the Anunnaki left open in their designs. That's where the hacking vector can come in, and that's how the Wingmaker's information was brought in. What do you mean by hacking vector? The Wingmakers are hacking the program of our consciousness framework as designed by the Anunnaki. Programmed internally in the DNA and functional implants by Marduk. And programmed externally by the hierarchy, also known as the Illuminati, Globalists, New World Order Elite, Bilderberg Group, etc. The Wingmakers must come into these programs from vectors that are less protected or defended by sensors, and have the potential for quick spread. Bear in mind, that while the functional implants of the Human 2.0 interface are programmable, should they become hacked or altered, they can be upgraded or patched just like software. So the ideal method to enter the human domain is to enter through a backdoor, appear harmless, even part of the order, and then quietly see the fractal process that can spread through the unconscious mind layer. That vector is not altering the program from the hardware or software perspective. It utilizes the consciousness framework in the human 2.0 interface without changing its programming. It's like an app riding on top of the operating system. It needs to be invisible until certain conditions are met. Once those conditions are met, it can be released, and once it is spread, it cannot be stopped. I'm not familiar with the term app. What does it mean? It's a software application that's not part of the OS, but uses the OS or operating system. If it isn't changing the consciousness framework, then what's it doing? It allows individuals to initiate their own sovereign integral process, which allows them to release the hold of these systems on their life essence. It's less about modifying or changing the program then it is about releasing the hold that these programs have on the consciousness of the life essence. Okay, I think I understand, so I want to go back to this process. You said it has two main parts, insertive behaviors and resistive behaviors. You also mentioned something about breath, but I didn't hear you say anything specific about it. Yes, the breath is an important way to bring you into self-awareness. It's like a quantum light turning on that illuminates your life essence that part of you that is not of the human 2.0 interface. You're able to sense and begin to re-experience this infinite being that is you. The breath is something that anyone can use without a lot of complication, and obviously, it's always with you. It doesn't require any technology or expertise. It's really just a way to shift attention to the core of yourself. The wing makers write about quantum breathing or quantum pause. It's a technique from Philosophy 7. Can you explain it? It's very simple. You breathe in through your nose for about 2 to 4 seconds, or whatever's comfortable for you. Once you've filled your lungs, you pause, or hold your breath, for the same amount of time you breathe in. While you're in the pause, holding your breath, feel it like a suspension of time, and fill that space with the feeling of I am. Okay, sorry to interrupt, but tell me again, what is the I am feeling? How do you define it? It's the sovereign aspect of consciousness. It's not the personality that defines your human experience, or you typically associate with as yourself. It is the infinite consciousness of you. It is also one. High is one. It is one thing, infinite life. It is not the mind, nor the heart, nor the body, nor the feelings and emotions of the personality. It is singular in its depth and silence. Okay, go on. After you hold the breath in your lungs, and anchor it with the I am feeling, you exhale through your mouth, again for the same period of time, and then you pause again, your lungs are empty, and as you pause, you hold the feeling of we are. Then you repeat this cycle until you feel you're done. Can you explain the we are feeling, too? This is a sense of connection to all. The sense that you are connected, and that the I am feeling, you held a moment ago is being shared with all. I use the out-breath pause, to place any of the hard virtues that I'm working on at the time. For example, I might be working on the virtue of compassion in my personal life, and I can hold that feeling in that out-breath pause, and imagine it as being shared with all. I think I understand what you're saying, and I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but how can this possibly compete with the globalist agenda, of world takeover? It's a fair question. But look at the reality. There are many who've protested this enslavement. Throughout history there have been people that have come to this realization through various means, and they alerted people to this deception. They may call it a conspiracy, without really understanding the depth of this deception, or its ultimate plan, but in whatever way they know of this, and at whatever level, they all experience fear. 
The fear is that we're powerless to stop them. The capstone of the elite have been planning this for more than 11,000 years, before Human 2.0 even existed, the plot was devised. They have powerful interdimensional beings that know humanity on an intimate level, because they literally created the human being, and they can program humanity with such granularity, as to define our life paths down to our day-to-day -day choices. How can one possibly defeat such an antagonist? They have the money, they have the politicians in their pockets, they have the defense and protection, they have the powerful relationships everywhere in the world, and they have the most powerful technology, in terms of surveillance and weapons. Their innermost circle is impenetrable. We can be wide awake and aware of what's happening, but awareness doesn't suddenly, in itself, change the chessboard. They taunt us to protest. Wave your signs, publish your websites, fling your fists to the sky, investigate all you want, it won't change a thing. They will tell us to our faces that their power is inexhaustible. This is how they think. They want us to feel this futility and have this overriding sense that the end game is unavoidable. They want us to believe that we are powerless. Remember, they are securing the world and its populations for the return of Ainu. That is their program, and while only the capstone of the elite understands this plan, it is enough, because the downstream operatives are loyal, programmed entities. All one needs to do is to watch Madeleine Albright in that 60 Minutes interview, and you will understand how they have been programmed to think. I don't think I saw that. What did she do? About a year and a half ago, Leslie Stahl of 60 Minutes asked the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Madeleine Albright, if the death of a half million children was worth the price to essentially punish Saddam Hussein. Albright responded that it was. You see, this is the enemy that holds power. If they can justify killing children, they can do anything. The wing makers have written that it isn't the protests that will change this enemy. If we shout at them and practice resistance with our guns in the street, they will only squash us. To bring their objective to a halt, we need to push down the wall, and we can do this by being practitioners of the sovereign integral process or anything similar. If human beings become self-aware, deprogrammed entities, who understand specifically how we have been enslaved and for what reason, we can collectively push down the wall that separates us from our true selves. This creates a chain reaction that affects everyone, including the capstone of the elite. The wall falls for them, too. It's using the consciousness of the life essence, to reveal the human 2.0 consciousness as an invented reality. It's weaning from the hologram of deception, to the reality that all life exists infinitely, as equals in oneness. Okay, but how do we know that we'll be successful against them? We don't, other than what I said before, that the wing makers are humans who have time traveled to share this sovereign integral framework. I realize this sounds like science fiction meets David and Goliath. I can appreciate that, but I'm explaining what I know as directly and honestly as I can describe it. If anyone hears this interview, assuming it's released sometime in the future, then you can decide for yourself if what I say stands up to your scrutiny. I would just caution some to consider the possibility that should you dismiss it, your reaction could be a programmed response. It is your consciousness framework that is sensing and responding. Consider this before you dismiss this information as fiction. But how would a person know this? I find myself doubting this disclosure. I don't find it very plausible. As a journalist I'm trained to be suspicious of sources, and as much information as you've shared with me, I find myself wondering how this is possible, and I haven't heard about it. The hierarchy practices deception by controlling the buttons on the machine of absolute power. This machine is... But you yourself said the internet was not something that they wanted to get out. True, but whatever technology is released, they will find a way to use it to their advantage. It doesn't matter what the technology is, they will find a way to subvert it, modify it and use it for their agenda. These are extremely bright beings that are obsessed with the centralization of power and control, so that Anu can insert himself without resistance. What if enough people woke up and rebelled? Couldn't we start a revolution and overthrow these crazy criminals? They are not crazy. They are deceptive intelligences, who have lost all sense of connection to their true selves. In many ways, they are the ones who are lost, and because they are so lost, they have led the unsuspecting to their haze of obedience. We have followed them. That's our responsibility. The material is here, in this interview, to wake up. But it's one thing to wake up, and it's another thing to know what to do about it. You mentioned a revolution, 
According to the wingmakers it would be a waste of life. They are not going to relinquish what they have worked so hard and long to produce. This will only change when the wall is pushed down. The wall is the human 2.0 consciousness framework that is programmed within every human being. The wall needs to be pushed down, and the way this occurs is not through protest, storming the gates, or shaking our collective fists in their face. It must be done through individual self-realization, and this, because of our programming, requires us to follow a process that enables us to become self-realized of our life essence. If we remain in separation, we can't solve the problem of separation. If we remain in deception, we can't reveal anything of our true nature. So we need to see all, as one and equal, in this hologram of deception, and that includes the capstone of the elite, as much as the poor and hungry. I don't see how people will be able to do that. Maybe I'm a pessimist, I don't know, but will enough people really be able to do this? At the heart of this whole situation is a single reality, and that reality, as hard as it may be to touch, is that we are infinite beings. Everything that is of space-time is within the hologram of deception. Everything. Which reality do you believe is more powerful and lasting? Whatever is infinite. Don't believe the programming that you are powerless. The sovereign integral process demonstrates that you are not merely a programmed life existence. I feel I could go on with this conversation for another couple hours, but I also sense you're trying to close it up. How are you doing on time? I can go a little longer if you have more questions. I have lots of questions. How about if we take a short break and I'll take that time to review my notes, and then I'll try and keep my next set of questions to another 15 minutes or so. How does that sound? Sure, that's fine. Great, then we'll begin in 10 minutes. The tape is rolling again, and I've got my questions. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, good. Does it seem like a strange coincidence that the Labyrinth Group was trying to create time travel technology, and you stumbled upon the wingmakers who are time travelers? Not entirely. But how do you really know that they're not aliens or some other non-human beings? Sometimes you just have to take things at face value, when there's no evidence to the contrary, and no evidence that would support any reason for them to misrepresent themselves. Through all of my discussions with you, this interview is like someone coming into my home and rearranging all the furniture. What advice do you have for anyone who reads this and gets a little paranoid, or uneasy about this information, and what should they do about it? This disclosure is not meant to frighten anyone, or make them paranoid. It's meant to support them in their own awakening as infinite beings. That's really it. That's the information's purpose. This includes all of the Wingmaker's information in whatever form it's in. There's a core stability inside you, that's been sidelined in favor of a manufactured or programmed response to life. You are programmed to fear, because then you will abdicate your liberties to your saviors. And who do you suppose your saviors will be? Who is it that makes Saddam Hussein out to be a monster, while they kill hundreds of thousands of children, to prove their power is moral? The entities behind that power, are the ones who will step forward and claim to save you. How they will do this is an unknown, but I have no doubt they will do it. And every time they do it, the corrals grow in number, and the populations inside the corrals swell in size. The fences get higher. Those who remain outside the corrals will think they have insight or special information that allows them to remain independent or free, but they're still operating inside their human 2.0 interface. The only real question, as I see it, has two parts. 1. Do I serve truth or deception? And 2. How do I best serve truth? If you feel that the best way to serve truth is to protest, resist, build awareness about what is happening in the world, then do that, but I would recommend doing it from a non-polarity perspective. You can't fight separation with more separation, it will only polarize. It's important to feel that you are standing up, not in fear, or some other programmed emotion, but that you are aligned to your life essence, and an expression of that source within you, even when you protest. Others may prefer to undergo the sovereign integral process and focus on this more internal stratagem. There is no formula here, and certainly you can do both. But to know this information and then remain passive, a pure observer, is a programmed response, and that is not an answer to, how do I best serve truth? It is a denial of truth. 